Okay, you ready for the next lesson? So at the end of the last lesson, I briefly mentioned epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. In this lesson, we're gonna get into those layers in great detail. So here is a quick overview of some of the things we're gonna to cover today. Ready? Whoa, that's a lot. So what are we gonna cover? Epidermis, dermis, hypodermis, layers of the epidermis, layers of the of the dermis. Hypodermis doesn't have any layers, so just the hypodermis. Okay, that's what we're gonna cover. We're gonna start at the top, the epidermis. So here we go, the epidermis, the outer layer of your skin, but it's not so simple. The epidermis is actually divided into five layers. Okay, ready? Here we go. The outer layer of skin, that's the epidermis. It is made of stratified squamous cells. So those weird flat egg, fried egg looking like cells. It is hardened waterproof protection from keratin. So the outer layer of your skin is dead skin cells filled with keratin. <clears throat> it is avascular, meaning no blood vessels. That prefix a means without and vascular has to do with blood vessels. So avascular without blood vessels. The epidermis creates our skin tone through a pigment called melanin. In the epidermis, it's relatively rapid cell division, especially at the basal or bottom layer. And remember in the first video, I told you that your skin replenishes about every 30 days. So that makes sense that you'd need some rapid division. Again, it renews itself monthly and it sits on top of a basement membrane. That's a characteristic of epithelial tissue. So that's important. So now let's talk about the layers of the epidermis. There are five of them. We have the stratum corneum, the stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and stratum basali. All right, so here is a visual where you can see at the top, stratum corneum, below stratum lucidum, below that stratum granulosum, then stratum spinosum, and then stratum basali. And you can see clearly that it is sitting on top of a basement membrane. So the stratum corneum, this is the top layer. It is completely keratinized. That means filled with keratin, so they're dead. It provides tough waterproofing protection. And there are many layers of those um, stratified squamous cells. So it's not just uh, two layers of stratified squamous. And these cells flake off and usually they flake off in sheets because they are held tightly to each other. Next, we have the stratum lucidum. Now this is only present in thick skin, like the palms of our hands, the soles of our feet, and if you have a callus. So in all the rest of our skin, this layer is absent. So there are only five layers of skin in thick skin. Thin skin has four layers because the stratum lucidum is absent. Again, it's absent in thin skin. It is also completely keratinized, dead. And it's a narrow transparent layer. So relatively narrow compared to the stratum corneum. Below that, we have the stratum granulosum. In the stratum granulosum, we have cells that are filling with those granules of keratin, the waterproofing protein, and they're dying. So in this layer, the stratum granulosum, we go from living cells to dead cells that are providing that waterproof protection. Below that, we have the stratum spinosum. There's some cell division happening here, Important thing, it contains those Langerhan cells that we talked about in the previous lesson. Those are the immune system cells that can capture and deal with some invaders on their own, but also stimulate the immune response when necessary. Okay, so the stratum spinosum below, so stratum corneum, stratum lucidum only in thick skin, stratum granulosum, and now we're at spinosum. Okay. And then our last and final layer of the epidermis is the stratum basali. 
We have a lot of cell division happening here. This is really the hotbed of cell division. It is a single layer of cells, but it contains two important types of cells, melanocytes and keratinocytes, okay? And again, that's the stratum basale. The stratum basale is gonna sit on that basement membrane. So let's talk about the melanocytes first. The melanocytes produce melanin. Melanin colors our skin and provides protection from ultraviolet rays, which I talked about in the first lesson. Eumelanin produces black and brown pigments, and pheomelanin produces yellow and red pigments. And the amount of melanin you have and the type of melanin you have determines how much your skin is pigmented. Melanin is located on the superficial side of the nucleus. That means closer to the surface of your skin. If it wasn't, that kind of wouldn't provide any protection from ultraviolet radiation. Remember, the radiation is coming at your skin like this from the sun, and the melanin needs to be closer to the surface of the skin to protect the nucleus. And the melanocytes make up to about, about 10 to 20% of cells in the stratum basale. Okay, so about every one to 10, one out of 10 or one out of five cells in the stratum basale are gonna be melanocytes. So here's what they look like. They look like these spidery-like projections coming from them. Okay, and you can see clearly they're in that single stratum basale layer. Okay, and they produce melanosomes, those um, vesicles filled with melanin, and then the melanin protects the nucleus and creates pigment. You can see the difference between dark, darker skin and lighter skin. It's the type of melanin and the amount of melanin that's produced. So it's two different layers of how we get different pigments. Now, we also have keratinocytes, and they are gonna produce the keratin, that waterproofing protein. They start or originate in the stratum basale, that single layer. Okay, and they get pushed to the surface as they become filled keratin. So the oldest cells in your skin are at the surface and they're going to flake off. And then the youngest cells are going to be down in the stratum basale where all that division is happening. So in your skin, old at the top, young at the bottom. So young to old like that. Okay, so that was a lot. That's the structure of the epidermis. Stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, stratum basale, attaching on the basement membrane, okay, the lucidum only present in thick skin, granulosum is where it's filling with keratin and dyeing, basali, lots of division, Langerhans cells in the spinosum, melanocytes, keratinocytes in the basali. But we didn't even finish the basement membrane. What's that? It's not really a layer in the epidermis. It's just made of collagen fibers, just, but it's so important. And the stratum basale attaches here. So it bonds the epidermis to the dermis underneath. So it's actually really important for holding your skin in place. Now let's move to the layer underneath, the dermis. And so underneath the epidermis, we have the dermis. It is strong, it is flexible, it is made of connective tissue, and it contains nerves and capillaries. <clears throat> the dermis helps to control body temperature. So remember, we talked about this in the previous lesson. It controls the amount of blood flow into the capillaries. Now let's talk about the layers of the dermis. There are only two. So epidermis had five layers. The dermis only has two. So we have the papillary dermis and the reticular dermis. All right, so let's start at the top, the papillary dermis. The papillary dermis is loose connective tissue. It has dermal papillae, which indent into the epidermis. And the function of those is to hold the dermis to the epidermis. So rather being flat like this, where they could slide more, the uh, 
papillary epidermis is ridged, so lots of bumps. So when the epidermis sits on there, they're held more tightly together. So your skin doesn't slide in layers past each other. What about the reticular dermis? Well, the reticular dermis is dense connective tissue, lots of collagen and elastin fibers, and it contains blood vessels, nerve receptors, glands, a lot going on there in the reticular dermis. And let's move to the layer underneath, the hypodermis, which, guess what, doesn't have any extra layers. So epidermis, five layers, dermis, two layers, hypodermis, that's it, no extra layers. The hypodermis is the deepest layer of skin, is very vascular, that means remember blood vessels, so lots of blood supply here, is loose connective tissue, primarily that's adipose tissue, it provides insulation, it anchors our skin, and it's also the site of subcutaneous injections. So something like epinephrine, we're going to want that needle to get injected into our subcutaneous layer. Why? Primarily because, remember, it's very vascular. If you inject it into just your epidermis, it's not actually getting into the blood supply. And here you can see it, the hypodermis. So in a subcutaneous injection, we want to get it into that fatty tissue because of the blood supply. Okay, so here we have the layers, the epidermis, five layers, dermis, two layers, hypodermis, just one. Remember the top of the epidermis, the stratum corneum, has cells that are flaking off those oldest cells. Remember, start at the bottom and move upward, youngest to oldest. So some interesting stuff. First is fingerprints. Fingerprints are epidermal ridges, and they're caused by those dermal papillae. So remember I said the dermis kind of goes up and down like this, sort of like waves, and creates these dermal papillae. So when the epidermis sits on it, they kind of get anchored together. Well, the result of that is fingerprints. And the function of fingerprints is to provide grip. So it's not, the function is not to be able to identify you. The function is grip. All right, so here you can see the dermal papillae here where the dermis goes up and down like this, the epidermis goes down into those grooves and it creates fingerprints. Calluses, okay, if you've ever had the unfortunate experience of having one, you'll know. Why do we get calluses? Well, cell division and filling with keratin, you remember in that stratum granulosum layer, occurs faster in areas of friction. So if you have shoes that are uncomfortable and your foot is rubbing against the side or you've been working with your hands, in those areas of friction, the division and filling with keratin happens faster. So it creates some thickened skin and the purpose is for more protection. Tattoos. The ink is going to be injected into the dermis. The epidermis is shed, so some ink will be in the epidermis, and that will get um, shed as the epidermis is replaced. So if you want the tattoo to be permanent, it's going to need to be in the dermis. The hypodermis is too vascular, meaning the ink would just be taken away. The needles are going to puncture the skin 50 to 3,000 times a minute. And why do tattoos fade? Well, the immune system is gonna carry away some of that pigment over time. And UV radiation can also increase fading. All right, so you can see that the pigments, this is the tattoo ink in the dermis. Here's the stratum corneum. So here we have the epidermis and we have the dermis and here is the tattoo ink. Blisters. Blister is a rounded elevation of the skin. The layers of the epidermis separate. So remember stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum um, spinosum, stratum basale. So there's some separation between those layers or a separation between the epidermis and the dermis. Okay? And that gap between layers fills with fluid. So here is a slide of it and you can see here the layers separated and filled with fluid. Cleavage lines or tension lines. 
<clears throat> we have elastin and collagen fibers um, in our dermis and specifically in the reticular dermis, and they align in some directions more than others in areas of our body. They're important for surgery. So the surgeon in a non-emergent situation is going to want to make an incision parallel to those cleavage lines to minimize scarring. If the surgeon in this illustration here cuts across cleavage lines, it's more likely to scar. Okay, so here's just an illustration of where those collagen and elastin fibers orient around our body in cleavage lines. Now we also have flexure lines or joint lines, okay? and they're actually folds in our dermis. They occur at or close to our joints. We have a lot of them on our palms. Okay? And it's where the dermis is tightly secured to deeper structures. So it keeps the skin from sliding easily when joints move. So if you made a fist, if it weren't for dermal um, folds creating flexure lines, your skin might slide around as you were moving your hand. So that's a little bit gross. All right, stretch marks. Stretch marks happen when the elastin fibers in the dermis are stretched and stretched and stretched until they tear. And stretch marks occur with rapid weight gain or growth. So the times when they're most likely to occur, pregnancy, puberty, and with bodybuilders. Typically, they're pink or bluish at first, and they can fade to silvery white scars. Okay, so stretch marks. And cellulite. Okay, cellulite is when fat cells get squeezed between bands of collagen or connective tissue that attach muscle to the dermis, hypodermis underneath. <clears throat> Almost no men are affected, but about 90% of women are. So cellulite has varying grades. So um, zero, you would see no dimpling of the skin. In the first um, layer where you're gonna see cellulite is when you're only gonna see that dimpling when you squeeze the skin. And then as you progress, you're gonna see the dimpling um, when you're standing, not when you're lying down, and eventually you're gonna see that dimpling no matter what. Okay. There you have it, all about the skin, the epidermis, the dermis, the hypodermis, and some interesting stuff.